goodness. You are such an inspiration. Wow, you really You're are. You're so strong. Can I pet your service dog? Ugh. One, two, three, let's go! We are artists, parents, teachers, good guys, bad guys, students, leaders. I'm not your inspiration, yeah, I'm fully who I am. Got my own expectations that don't fit into your plans. I'm not your sad story, so I wrote it in this song. Everything you know about disability is wrong. Yeah, everything you know. Yeah, everything you know about disability is wrong. Hey listeners, welcome to another episode of Everything You Know About Disability is Wrong. Today on the show, we have Madison Tevlin. Madison is an actor, content creator, model, and advocate. She's also an award-nominated talk show host, three-time Webby Award winner, five-time Cannes Lion winner, and her on-screen credits include Mr. D, Who Do You Think I Am?, hosting the red carpet at the Canadian Screen Awards, and her iconic role as Cosentino in the film Champions, starring Woody Harrelson and directed by Bobby Farrelly. In honor of World Down Syndrome Day, Color Down's Assume That I Can campaign, starring Madison, took the world by storm, accumulating over 150 million views in under a week. Madison strives to shatter the expectations people have towards individuals with Down syndrome. She's always said it's the least interesting thing about her, and we will get into that. Welcome to the show, Madison. We're so excited to have you. Thank you so much for having me, and I'm so excited to be on this podcast with you today. Oh, we are so excited to have you here. We love the work you do, and we are absolutely part of that 150 million people who you took us by storm with that assume that I can campaign just absolutely incredible we are so excited to talk to you before we get into the interview let's go ahead and do our audio descriptions um I can actually start this is Lily speaking I am a white passing mixed race woman I have half of my hair is black and half of my hair is dyed blonde um like a total Corella Deville and I have um, my usual outfit, which is my black turtleneck and uh, the necklace that I will probably fidget with during the episode. And Erin, take it away. Hi, this is Erin. I have red hair, blue eyes, and I'm sitting in my chair wearing a blue and white striped shirt. Well, thank you. So I have beautiful long brown hair stuck back in a high ponytail, have a big smile up on my face, and I'm wearing this really cute gray shirt right now, and it's like all heart, hearts all over it, the black shirt, and jeans. Yes, wonderful. I'm so glad you shared that you have a big smile on your face because, Madison, it's one of my favorite things about you. Your smile is so contagious. Truly incredible. Um, thank you so much for being here. We are so excited. Erin, you want to take it away with our starter question? Yeah, so our podcast is called Everything You Know About Disability is Wrong. And our first question is always, what do people get wrong about you? Well, I think my biggest challenge is when people assume that I can't do things. I sometimes get treated like I'm a little kid and I, that I can't speak up for myself or stand up for myself. Oh, that's a really good point, The that you can stand up for yourself. I think that is so important um, because sometimes people think that they're trying to be like a, a good person or trying to do the right thing by speaking up or speaking over people with disabilities. And in reality, you can stand up for your dang self. <laughs> I know, like you really can. That That's a really good point. We, we ask everyone that question and... Um, you know, there's a lot of different things that come up with like ableism people face. And, um, I think that what you said is, is really important of that. Just like you're your own person. No one else needs to step in and try to do things for you. I totally agree with that. Also, I love your heart sweater. It's very, very cute. And I was going to say something (laughs) before we even started recording. Well, thank you. It's one of my favorite sweaters that I own. Oh, I love that. It's so great to have like the outfit you go to when you know you have like something you have to do that day. It's always always so cute and comfy and cozy and comfortable whenever I have to do anything. Yes. That I'm so glad you wore that for this podcast too, because the whole point of this podcast is to be like 
authentic and cozy. And, you know, if we could all be in person, I think this podcast would be best filmed if we were all wearing like sweatpants, sweatshirts, drinking like hot cocoa. Yeah. And like a really cozy, nice, warm tea always makes us so much better. Uh, Yes. Okay. So I'm a favorite tea. Mm -hmm. Oh, I'm a big tea drinker, but my favorite tea would have to be ginger tea. And I like like really like herbal tea, like peppermint. I like a whole like thing at home, like a whole station of just tea that I drink every morning and every night before I go to bed. I love it. I love tea. It's my favorite. Peppermint tea, ginger tea, black tea. I know. I love like lemon ginger and like all the herbal things are my favorite. And chamomile too. Oh yeah, chamomile is a good one. I was really into coffee and then Erin has actually helped convert me to be more of a tea drinker. Erin, what was the tea that I had at your house that was like purple? Oh, it was like magic tea. I don't remember the name of it. It was like lavender, blueberry. Oh, it was so good. She you guys are it. really like I'm loving both of you right now. <laughs> well, we love you too, Madison. This is absolutely great. Um, and just speaking of excitement, sharing more excitement, you have had such an incredible year. Congratulations! Just have to say that out the get. Well, thank you. So incredible. Um, so with all of the success and new attention that you've gotten, especially with that we mentioned that 150 million views, that was so quick and suddenly everyone saw your face how do you manage to stay calm and stay grounded and take care of your mental health with all of this new attention well i do listen to music a lot and it heals me it is the number one thing i use to take care of my mental health i walk outside as much as i possibly can and i go on the treadmill for 15 minutes every single day when i get outside i always feel so much better about myself and I love spending time with family and friends. Well, oh, that's super great. What's your favorite music? Oh, my to? favorite music. Thank you so much for this question. I could literally go on and on and on about it. Because music is basically my life. But I love like, the Rec Laws, to, to the Backstreet Boys, to Nelly Rattata, because I love her music. Because I love her music. And I love Adele. Oh. I love- Love Adele. I know, she's so good. What's your favorite song? My, oh, from all those artists? Oh, Adele? Oh, I Set Fire to the Rain. So good. <laughs> so good. That's like a good one for like hyping yourself up and like feeling powerful. I so agree. Yes. I... When we did our little pre-production call, you had mentioned that music was something that was really important to you. This morning I woke up and I was, I was just having a very anxious morning and I literally remembered you saying that on the call and was like, music is a really great thing for calming and like helping mental health. I'm going to take Madison's advice. And I just put in my headphones and went for a walk and I'm like super calm now. Um, So literally before our even recorded episode, you have already influenced me, Madison. Well, thank you, because music is really part of my life. Like, since I was a little girl, I'd always music playing around in the house, like, all the time. And my uncle used to be in a band. My nona used to play the accordion all the time. So it's been all around me. So I listen to, like, a lot, a lot of music and a variety of artists. That's so incredible. And growing up in a family where, like, music is everywhere is so important. I, I personally don't understand people who don't listen to music because it's such a big part of my life. I'm the same way. My my brother's a musician and he's oh, that's so cool. He's a lot older than me. So when I was like a little kid, he was a teenager and his band would be like practicing. So there was always just like music playing throughout my house and now I'm the same as you or like mm-hmm. I just have to have music playing at all. And time. I also have a question for you. What is your favorite artist? Okay, my, really. Yeah, so my It's kind of a double answer. My favorite artist of all time (laughs) is the Jonas Brothers because they they were my like first special interest as a young autistic child. I got like really into them and I I researched like I knew a million facts about all of them and their music was like really important to me as a young like teenager. Like it just helped me feel so calm 
and I just stuck to it. So that's kind of my like nostalgic answer. My like what was like my all time favorite, like what means the most to me. My favorite music right now is Phoebe Bridgers. Oh, that's interesting. Yes. Erin, what about you? My favorite is Mariah Carey. Mariah Carey, I love her. I'll tell you a story. So my dad took me for my birthday, and he took me to Mariah Carey concert, and I had so much fun with him. What concert was it? It was Mariah Carey. Was it like a Christmas show? Yes. It was Christmas related. It was so much fun. I love love her so much. I've been a fan for like... Let's see, since 1990, so that was like a long time ago. Wow. Yeah. That's incredible. Um, Yeah, that was like one of the first things I feel like Aaron and I clicked on was having like a nostalgic favorite artist, and we talk about Mariah and the Jonas Brothers a lot. (laughs) Thank you for asking us a question, Madison. We love it when guests come on and do that. That's so nice. I really wanted to ask because I was very curious. I'm so grateful you did. I, I'm like you. I, I mean, we have more questions, so listeners, I promise, will move on. But truly, you could get us talking about music for hours, and we would just be happy to. Music and tea combined together. Oh yes, of course, incredible. I mean, that's now this is like on my checklist of something I want to do in the future is get the three of us in a room, listen to music, sip tea, have a great time. Perfect. I would love that so incredible (laughs) now i want to do that okay i promise we listeners i promise we'll move on it won't be music the whole time (laughs) so uh listeners you may recognize madison from the assume that i can campaign that was so amazing this year um truly like aaron and i had so many conversations about how working in disability advocacy like that campaign was so incredible it communicated such an important message in such an amazing way so let's talk about that campaign a little bit how did you get that part and get involved with that campaign okay so the ndss reached out and told me that the small agency in Cordown were shooting a new campaign for world downstream day and that and that i should send in a self-tape so i did when i found out i i got it i was so excited but I had no idea what to expect. It was a full two days of shooting in Barcelona. And it was one of a lifetime experience. The crew and everyone on set made me feel so comfortable and made everything so easy for myself and so comfortable. I had no idea that I was going to be the main star of this whole campaign. The shooting days were long, but I would do it all over again because it was so fun and so powerful. I'm so glad it was a great experience. Like that makes total sense and makes sense why it was such a good campaign because clearly you were having a great time while you were filming it. And it just made me feel like that I could do this more. Oh, absolutely. And you should do this more. Like truly the casting people who cast you in that commercial or that campaign did such an amazing job because you are the perfect person to communicate that message. You like radiate confidence and like, I really admire that about you. There's such a level of confidence and strength that you show that, you know, is the perfect, you're the perfect person to deliver that. Like, just assume that I can. So maybe I will. That's the whole point. Yes, Mm -hmm. absolutely. What was it like? um, What was the reaction like that when people saw it the response has been so overwhelming in the best way possible and seeing the impact that it made on so many other people out there in the world has been so incredible when it was released in this first week it was watched over 150 million times so that was a real eye-opener to understanding that this work does make a difference. And it started as a conversation with people, and all of a sudden, they were talking about assumptions, and that they were really connecting with it and connected to it. That's amazing. Yeah, that makes total sense. Um, And I love that it went straight to assumptions, because 
so many episodes that we have done of this show, um, when we ask that initial question, the, so what do people get wrong about you? A lot of our guests' answers have been, they make assumptions about me. Um, and they're usually not the positive assumptions that your they're campaign not, is. True. They're not always right, but sometimes they can be. Yes. And especially if people kind of reframe to have those more like competent assumptions, like assume right. and, you know, it's, I think it's best to assume that people can do things until they say they need help or they say they need uh, support in any kind of way. Erin, I know you've talked about like assumptions mm -hmm. and I, I think, I think about you t talking to me about like your college experience and how so many people just assumed that you wouldn't go to college and you have a master's degree. <laughs> like, Yeah. No, yeah, that was always a thing. And one of the other assumptions that I get is that I'm a, I'm a writer. I've written books. I've been published. And people think that I'm cheating, that I didn't write it. Like, I wrote it. I'm a good writer. Get over it. <laughs> that is, like, the quintessential assume that I can moment there. Yeah. Of like, that's ridiculous that people immediately jump to just assuming that there's no way you could have done that, which is wild because Erin is a phenomenal writer and everything she writes is incredible. Uh, so we've touched on this a little bit, but why was it important to you as an advocate to be a part of that Assume That I Can campaign? Well, I think it was so important to me because people were are talking, taking the time to listen to our stories. There was a time when I didn't even want to talk about my disability. Mm. This campaign was about not judging people for the way they look, for who they are. Yeah, that's... Not assuming things about people before they get to know them. And it mm. really did make me realize how important it is to talk about it. I realize that my disabilities is a part of me, but it's not all of me. And making this campaign with a small agency in Cora Down made me want to advocate even more because there's still a lot of work that needs to be done. Absolutely, 100%. So much work needs to be done. And I think that's really interesting that it, um, even though you still have the, you know, the position that disability is just a part of me, but being a part of this campaign kind of helped you want to start speaking about your disability. Even more, more. E wow. even more and really like taking the time and listen to other people's story and what they had to share with the world is also super important. Yeah, absolutely. That is really interesting. Do you think before mm -hmm. um, you just didn't like to talk about disability because everyone wanted to make that your whole thing? Well, I always knew that I had Down syndrome, but I never really knew that I wanted to talk about it. But my friend, one of my friends actually made me open up and talk about it more because I didn't want to. And that was a whole part of why I'm, I was kind of making who I think I am was getting my branding and what I really wanted to do for myself. And then I realized that talking about this made me realize that I can't listen to other people's stories. Maybe they have the same thing. To me, like we're related to each other and we're connecting in that way. And it feels so good. Yes, absolutely. I mean, I even think like this podcast, if like I, before this podcast, I had never publicly shared that I was autistic. I always kind of just like kept it hidden or I didn't want to share that with people. And then this podcast, it was like, well, I of course want to be open about this is the point. And like through hearing other people's stories and sharing their disability, I've gotten so much more comfortable with like owning, using the word disabled and being proud of it and sharing rather than it being something that I feel like needs to be like disguised or hidden away. That nobody knows about, but we should just all be ourselves. And that's what's so important, just being ourselves. And we get those opportunities and we have the chance to do whatever we want and do what we love and stand up for what we believe in. Yes, absolutely. And I love that what you believe in even evolved a little bit. Like, and now you're like, I believe in sharing this part of myself and it's important to that people your listen personal to it. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, totally. Yeah, you should never, no one should ever be ashamed of who they are. It's hard sometimes because of like. I know, but we're all in this together and we're all doing yeah. this together. So that's the whole point. Yeah, being like talking 
to other people who have disabilities is really powerful because it makes it, you know, the bad days or the bad experiences is not as bad when you have somebody else to talk about that can understand your experiences. Yes. So let's um, jump to your other work. I know you filmed Champions. Can you tell us about that? Well, I would love to talk about Champions. I could talk about it for as long as you want me to. It's my favorite thing to talk about. So when I walked on set, I didn't know what to expect because it was my first ever movie. I was the only girl on the set with a team of boys. Everyone let me just be myself, and that's how Constantino really did come to life. I was just being myself. And Constantino was so like me, and playing her was so much fun. I would do it all over again for sure. I became best friends with everyone on the film, and how they're like my family now. And being on set with the cast of people who had disabilities was amazing. Because representation is more important and that our voices matter. Perfect. Absolutely. That's a great answer. I love that. Yes, and it goes with everything we've been saying of that, like, representation, community, it's so important. And um, I feel like Champions was such a great film in terms of showing that like representation does not just mean having one person with a disability play your disabled character in the film like there are stories to be told and i love that it's there's a whole team in champions and characters with different like we're, stories we're all, and we're all involved in it yes absolutely um so you said that the character you play constantino was um is a lot like you. Did you like get to help kind of create that character? I kind of did it my and through myself because when I walked there, it was just like me just being myself. And then they picked like me as Constantino and they thought that I would be a really good fit for it. And playing her was so much fun because I really got to see the different sides of me that I didn't know was possible. Oh, that's so fun. And I think it it's funny the way that you were picked for that role and the assume that I can campaign it um, makes it like clear that you worked really hard on your own personal branding um, because I feel like yeah you're perfect for those characters and you can see that even just hearing you speak like one time you know that you're perfect for those two people that's incredible how long did you film for I think it was like two to three months for sure and it was filmed in Winnipeg okay so while you were filming, did you get to, like, hang out with the cast? Everyone. Oh, that's so fun. But I have a group of boys that are, like, my, like my really good, good friends. I got this core of people, but I also made a lot of friends throughout the whole team. But I had these people that I was, would always want to hang out with. And I, till this day, I'm always talking with them and texting with them. Oh, that's great. That's what I was going to ask next was, are you still in touch with the cast? That's so I fun. Am, I am. Only a few, but not everyone. That's so fun. I feel like when you make something together, it is like the best place to just make lifelong connections, especially two to three months in Winnipeg. Like, I don't know how busy know. Winnipeg is, but I feel like you definitely made a lot of memories together. We really did. And I loved every minute of it. Um, and so what was like the filming process like? There's a lot of cameras like everywhere and and working, I want to add this, working working with Woody Harrelson was like a dream because mm -hmm. we had this like really cute banter between each other and it, it worked really well for both of us. It was so easy to work with him and he pushed me to become a better actor because I'm, I knew that I really want to do this even more. Yes, and he's so talented. He's played so many like varied roles. That's so cool. But also you... I want to... I also want to add Kaylin Olsen because she's basically my soul sister for life. And also because I was the only girl, she really helped me in different scenarios with all the boys and of what, I, what, what to do with them. And For, for yeah. our listeners that know nothing about champions, can you fill them in? Who is Kaylin Olsen? So Kaylin Olsen is – sorry, it's hard to explain. No problem. It's, yeah. So, is a, so, Kaylin Olsen 
is the sister of Johnny in the movie Champions and also Woody Harrelson's girlfriend in the film. Cool, 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 cool. So good to have that. Got to have a little bit of sisterhood on set if you're going to be mm-hmm. around a bunch of dudes. And he was basically like my sister and he like really helped me open so many doors. They went better things. That's so incredible. Do you have like a favorite memory from set? There's so many memories. Oh, I can't choose. It's, this is going to be a hard question. But if I had to pick one God, this is so hard. It doesn't have to be qualified as your favorite. It could just be one. <laughs> um. Okay, true. Okay, so when everyone came to my, cause everyone came to my birthday, because we didn't have like a wrap party for the movie. So my mom did like this like big party in the hotel room. It was like, we used up the whole entire hotel just for my birthday. I was turning 20, and it was so much fun for everyone of the team to just go to my birthday. We all had so much fun like with all my favorite things, all my favorite food, all everything I wanted in one place, and I had so much fun with the whole team. Uh, in a and hotel And room. all the cast and crew team as well. It was like the whole thing. That's fun. Yeah, that sounds like a perfect birthday celebration. And nice, because you didn't get the wrap party. Nice to have some kind right. of fun to end, off mo- to end off the movie for everybody yes, yes. Awesome. so um madison you hosted your own talk show called who do, you Th- who do you think i am and it's amazing um and now you're going to be hosting your own podcast called 21 questions what made you want to host a talk show. Well, I love talking and asking lots of questions and getting to the heart of people's stories. I want I want the world to change and to see other people for who they are and to celebrate our differences. I love that. I love how dedicated you are to storytelling, Madison. It is, I feel like um, your like dreams and the way you want to change the world, it it fits so well with what Aaron and I want to do with this podcast. And I think you're going to be an amazing podcast host. Yes. Well, thank you. I'm really excited about it. Yeah, that's going to be so fun. And I, and I do feel like you work really hard to, based on what I've seen in, because I watched the episodes of Who Do You Think I Am? And you're really good at, um, just like getting to get people to feel very comfortable and open up and really share their story and authenticity is just so important. So um, I wanted to ask, you know, we have similar themes of what you do and what we do about letting people tell their own stories and dismantling stereotypes. Um, And Aaron and I have learned so much just from talking to our guests. So I'm wondering, is there anyone in particular that you are really excited to talk to that's going to be on your podcast that you want to learn their story? Well, I'm very excited to answer this question. So there's so many people that I really want to talk to, but I have to say I'm very excited about Woody Harrelson because even though I know him and I made a movie with him, people may not know his whole story and the things that he's been going through. And also Paris Hilton. I also invited Paris Hilton to come on the show, and she said yes. There's so much more to Paris that a lot of people realize. She's a singer and an actor and a girly girl just like me. But she's also an advocate like me and she make and she's making a real difference in the world. And I just can't wait to learn even more about her. Ah, oh, that's so amazing. Literally this morning, Aaron and I were talking about wanting to get Paris on this show because she is such an amazing, like she's doing really great things advocating for Um, especially mental health and now she talks about ADHD like really incredible she's a very good girl and I'm just so excited that I get to interview her yes that's gonna be so fun and the Woody Harrelson interview is gonna be incredible because you know him so like you're gonna be able to get really comfortable and really tell that story that is so fun you know I'm like so excited to speak with him and plus I haven't seen him in a really long time but be so excited to reunite with him again Oh my gosh, yeah, it's going to be so good for him to see you, especially like since filming Champions, you have had like a rocket launch of your career. You've been doing so incredible. So I bet he's so excited to talk to you too. That is so fun. And I've seen like some of the press you guys did for Champions, both you and him talking about it. It seems like 
you two definitely have. had an amazing connection and we like mm -hmm. i was gonna say that we've had a really strong bond by working with each other that's so great and i really like just shout out to all the actors out there who have been working for a very long time and you know they take their time on set to when there's like newer actors or it's someone's first film to really make them feel comfortable i think that's in any industry i just really applaud people who try to make those bonds with people who are like new to the industry i think that's really important very cool do you have before we move on? Because I know you said you want love talking about champions. Is there anything I else really you want to share? Is there anything else you want to share about champions or your I upcoming more, podcast? I definitely, I definitely have more moments to share for sure of champions. And also, I didn't really know Woody. So I remember the RV scene. I don't know if you guys watched the movie, but in the RV scene, I really got to know him even more than other people did. Because I was by myself with him, and a lot of people were like, do what they have to do, and it was just us who sitting together. And I never knew he lived in Hawaii, and he does. He does? Nice. And I've never been there before, so I really, really want to go and maybe to visit him. Oh, yes. Oh, my God. Hawaii is so beautiful. That's why I just want to go so bad, and know that he will be there. He can show me all around. So fun. Are you, Madison, are you in Canada right now? Yes, I am. Very cool. Very cool. I know I'm basically everywhere. <laughs> you are everywhere. Do you listen to Charlie XCX at all? Have you listened to that new album? Okay, well, there's the new line in, in one of the songs. It's like, I'm everywhere. I'm so Julia. But really, it's like, I'm everywhere. I'm so Madison. Like, you are everywhere. <laughs> it's incredible. You're an eight girl right now. It's amazing. Want to go to the next question? Yes, let's do it. Let's do it. So you often say um, Down syndrome is the least interesting thing about me. Can you share what that means and how you came up with that? Well, I would love to. I always say that I have Down syndrome, but it's the least interesting about me because I think there's more interesting things about me than my disability. And that tagline has stuck with me until this day. Yeah, I it's... totally understand that. Because it's like, people assume, make assumptions, that your whole life revolves around your disability, and that's just not true. Because you've done amazing things, besides just having a disability. You know, I always say it's almost, it's always so much fun proving people wrong. Yes, that's a really, that feels... Um... Aaron, like it could be one of your mantras in that you you love proving people wrong and like i i like to tell people like feel free to make wrong assumptions about me i'll be happy to prove you wrong like it's just so nice um i love that energy and i think that that we just align so well madison you could hang out with me and Aaron anytime because we align we literally align so well on that like everything you just said is part of why we wanted to make this podcast because we like there were a couple of times that Aaron and I would have opportunities to do things and then the opportunity would turn out like the questions they would ask would just be for me about autism for Aaron about muscular dystrophy and it's like hey we have like more to offer like and don't get me wrong I love talking about being autistic it's very important to me it's a big part of my identity but it's not all who we are like we're also just cool girls <laughs> that's true you, you guys do a lot yes all three of us mm -hmm. and i think that that so yeah i really i love that phrase did you do you like do you remember how you came up with that like when you first said the it's the least interesting thing about me well it was always my me and my mom had this conversation and we were trying to figure out what my talent would be in the future and what i really wanted to do and i never wanted to talk about my disability with any of my friends or any any of my family and then when I had that first branding conversation with one of my friends that's also a producer of my show who do you think I am and helping with 21 questions um she was the one that made me open more and want to talk about it more oh that's amazing and I love that your mom helped you with like branding and coming up with that. Erin, we haven't said it in many episodes, but go moms. I know, right? 
like my mom, like I feel like my mom and dad, both of them are like really fierce parents and they get what they want. And that's what I love about them. Mm-hmm. We and they just made that. me to be the better version of myself. And it's because of them to where I am today. Yes. I love, I just really, love my mom so much. It's so like fortunate for us to have parents that really pushed us to be the best that we can be. Because a lot of people don't have that. So it's just really nice to hear that your parents were so important to you. And they go through a lot of stuff. So that's why they just have helped me throughout my whole life and to, and supporting me along the way. Yes, it's kind of like an inside joke slash just recurring theme on this show, Madison, that we say go moms because it does seem to be a theme and i think that it is a testament to the impact that like really supportive parents can have on people um, because our guests are all doing amazing incredible things so it makes total sense that so many of them are like my mom helped me so much my mom pushed me and i think it is really cool that that's a theme and um yeah love supportive parents my go moms go dads my dad listens to every episode of this podcast. It's I love very that. Sweet. It's so cute. It is so cute. And he'll always text me afterward and be like, listen to this episode. It was so great. And he'll have like specific comments about things we said. And, you know, like, I guess that's like normal expected for that. But, you know, it's those little things where when your parents like really support you and just see like the potential in you, that's for I'm I'm just like you. I like everything good that I accomplish in life. I have to say like, it's due to like the amazing support I had in both of my parents for my whole life. I so agree with you. And I couldn't say that any better. Mm, yay. That makes I just want to say hello to Lily's dad. How are you? <laughs> <laughs> I don't think my parents listen to any episodes, which is fine. <laughs> but I think uh, my partner listens to every episode. That's very um, sweet. That is very sweet. It's always fun. And Madison, I can't wait for you to have this experience once your podcast episodes start coming out. When like someone you know will casually be like, oh, I listened to this episode. It was really good. Or this happened. And I'm like, oh, you listened to my, oh, okay. <laughs> like, I know. Like, it feels so good. Yes. And I know my dad will definitely listen to it, like every single day too. He's like so on it with me. I love when my dad goes to my social media because he, like, looks at, like, everything. And then he texts me after, like, oh, Madison, I'm so happy for you. I love you so much, sweetie. Our dads would get along. My dad does, like, the exact same thing. And he'll, <laughs> he'll like, randomly just text me, like, hope you're having a good day thinking yeah, about you, exactly my beautiful my child. Yeah, that's exactly what my dad Oh, it's so sweet. Like, and... even to, like, even talk about him right now, like, today, he would text me saying, have a good day, honey. Oh, I love that i really supportive and you know if you're listening to this and you're like oh i'm not close with my parents i don't have that relationship you know like it doesn't necessarily have to be biological you just have to find those people in your life who root for you and are willing to do something like send you that like i hope you have a good day text it's it's such like a little thing but it really does make does such a, a big yeah it really does and it's like when i see a text from my dad that's like just thinking of you, I'm like, oh, that, that just makes me feel so special. And like, I know. And like, even when I'm traveling, and I go away a lot and stuff. I, I'm not really with my parents, so they don't really travel with me. But when I text them or if I call them, I always feel so much better to continue on with my day. Oh, that's so good. I, it's so important because, like, I always, Aaron and I have talked about that. We always try to like let these parent conversations happen when they come up on the podcast because parenting a child with a disability like can be difficult and a lot of parents make like the difficulty of it kind of their entire identity and I feel like it seems like all three of our parents all three sets of our parents did a really great job in instilling exactly what we've talked about this whole episode of that like yes we have these things about us that might be a certain part, but we can do whatever we put our hearts to and we are supported and, um, and we, we can do all the things. Absolutely. Get those things done. And we can prove people wrong if they don't think we can't. 
Right. And it's so much fun. It's so important to be like, and, and, you know, I really do keep that in my back pocket at all times. Like if someone doesn't believe in me, I'm like, well, that's okay. Like my dad believes in me. My mom believes in me. That's all I need. Yeah. Yes. And the now only, all you need is your friends and family to, to build you back up again. Yes, I was literally just going to say, and now, Madison, you can have in your back pocket, like, Aaron and Lily believe in me, and I'll keep in my back pocket that you two believe in me. And Aaron, you can keep in your back pocket that we believe in you. Oh, I love that. So given everything we've said, I know we have talked about that we like to talk about things other than just our disability. What would you say to people specifically about Down syndrome? How, what do you want to change in the way people think about Down syndrome? Well, I want people to recognize that having Down syndrome doesn't limit so much potential. Anyone can learn something new every single day of their lives. And it's so much fun proving people wrong, like I say all the time. And I really do want to end those stereotypes. Well, I think you are doing an incredible job ending those stereotypes. Um, I think that like even just episodes like this are so important to ending stereotypes about all three of our disabilities. Like I think that there are a lot of people who, you know, would think would like have a whole bunch of assumptions about what the three of us would have to talk about, but we're just like three cool three girls chatting. Men. Yeah. Like, of course we have stuff to chat about. We're women. We have like womenhood in common. We all are like creatives in some way. We all are advocating like, we have so much in common to talk about outside of disability even. True. And also what I'm doing next is I'm going to be hosting my own podcast called 21 Questions. I, I got to announce it on What What Happens Live with Andy Cohen. And we've already booked Woody Harrelson, Nelly Furtado, because I love her music, Paris Hilton, and Emma Roberts to be my guest. And I'm so, so, so excited. We're going to be shooting in Toronto, L.A., and New York because I love those places and I hope to live there one day. And we're going to stay in Fairmont Hotels. I'm going to be learning all about guests and stories and who they really are as people. That is so so exciting. I love that to you. Well, thank you. You're going to have so much fun filming that. Um, Just, I can already tell, like, you're going to have such a blast. And those are amazing guests. Cannot wait to listen. Um, Guests, get ready and make sure you follow Madison on all of her social media. Um, It'll be linked in this episode description, all of her social profiles and stuff, so that um, you can follow along and make sure you're ready to subscribe to that podcast. Because I have a feeling if you are an everything you know about disability is wrong listener, then you are absolutely going to want to listen to Madison's podcast. We clearly have so much in common and are, you know, doing the work that needs to be done, dismantling what people assume about us and um, destigmatizing just so much. So uh, I definitely think listeners, you're going to want to tune into that one. Um, we don't have too much time left, so I'm going to transition into the fact that this is an Easter Seals podcast, um, obviously, and thank you, Easter Seals. Um, and Easter Seals is working for equity and access when it comes to education, employment, healthcare, community, and transportation. Um, so we like to talk to our guests just kind of about some of those topics. Um, I know we chatted with you beforehand um, and wanted to get into a little bit about education and community. So Erin, will you take us away? with our first education question. Totally. So uh, Madison, what was your education like and what kind of educational support was helpful for you? Well, I had one-on-one support until grade eight. My school provided educational assistance and I was fully integrated with the typical developing kids every day. When I went to high school, my mom and dad chose one that had design classes for students with a disability. And there were three EAs always around in the classroom at all times. And they would always rotate in helping the students out. All of my teachers meant so much to me and really helped and supported me along the way. That's incredible. That seems like an amazing level of support to having a rotating set of three education assistants 
That's a really great way to do it. Obviously, your education was a lot different than ours because you're in Canada. We're in the U.S. Right. Um, but that is that's really interesting. And I love that you had a fully integrated experience um, that you were in the classroom with other kids, whether disabled or not. And we're because we're all and it made me feel so good because we really are all the same. Absolutely. And I think so many education programs like were trying their hardest <laughs> when they created like separate classrooms and things. But that full integration is really where it's very important because, you know, you were able to see that you, your potential was just the same as every other kid learning around you. I think that's really important. And, um, certainly having those education assistants is what makes integrated education possible. So if you're a listener and you're trying to decide what you want to do and you think you have a passion for education, I definitely recommend getting whatever you need to um, like certifications, learning about disability, et cetera, so that you can um, like help make schools more integrated and get um, all of us in the same classrooms. That's really incredible. Um, speaking of the, like, fully integration, I feel like that probably helped you kind of build your community. Um, what does the word, like, community mean to you? Well, I have so many people that I can lean on to. I still talk to a lot of cast of champions, and they always make me feel so much better when I talk to them. And they always put a big smile up on my face. And also NDSS and Best Buddies organizations have also been supportive and so important in my life. Oh, that's amazing. It seems like those organizations and projects you've worked on where you've gotten to meet other people with disabilities doing the same kinds of things that you're doing has been really helpful. That's amazing. That's so, so cool. Um, and you... Do you have like a go-to person that you, if you know, you're like, I need support right now. I need advice that you go to. My mom, Amazing. for sure. Amazing. Back to the parents, obviously, but also my core people like my friends that are always around me all the time of every day of my life. When I'm home, I have those people that I can just, I can go to and talk to them. And then when they explain things to me, I feel so much better. Oh, I love that. And obviously think... my team. I love my team. Oh, yeah. Your team is amazing. They've been wonderful to chat with as we've been, like, organizing this episode. Um, do you think that having such, like, a solid group of friends and support um, is, like, helped your confidence and, um, like, helped you mm -hmm. be, like, really strong I in would, who you are? I, I would say they do. We do have each other's backs all the time and we build each other up. That is so crucial. I think that that is like such an important part of my journey with disability acceptance, like accepting my own disability has been making friends with people who accept me for exactly who I am. And like, I love those friends. So when I'm having a day where I don't feel so good about myself, I can like remind myself, well, I have amazing friends and they want to be around me. So I must be worth it. Some like that must make mean something. Yeah. And then you yes. feel so good about it after you talk to them. Yes, absolutely. Isn't it wild how sometimes you just like, if you just ramble at a friend for a little while, no, you can just... Like, they have their like open ears and they listen to you. And then if you just need them to talk, they will. But they're just there to like, if you need them kind of thing. Literally, <laughs> how many times a week, Erin, do I message you on Teams? Just like, hey, just going to rant for a second. <laughs> And I'll just like ramble about random stuff. And then almost always I follow up with, okay, I feel better now. I do that too. <laughs> it's so but good. But I have that only with scared of people. Absolutely. You got to know who to call when you need to like feel good. Because there are some people who you can like commiserate with and kind of feel sad with. But there are some people who are really good at like, I'm going to make you feel good. <laughs> and then and talk through everything with you. Yes. Yes, I definitely like process decision making verbally. Like I need to talk about it a lot before I make a decision. Right. Well, this has been amazing. I can't believe the hour is nearly up. We could chat with you forever. Like this is so fun. Thank you for coming on our show. Well, thank you so much for having me. I was so happy to talk with you too today. Tr truly amazing. Um, before we 
close out, anything else you want to say to our listeners? That ever, everyone can reach me on social media at Madison Tevlin on Instagram and TikTok. Uh, Yes, and you better go follow her. She is a rising star. And I, I mean, I, I can't wait to see everything you do, Madison. I think you are an icon and a legend and um, are amazing. And I know that I know that getting to say I interviewed Madison Tevlin is like a big thing on my resume now. So I'm excited. Like, I think you're so cool. Um, Thank you so much for being on our show. Um, Listeners, she said her socials will also have them linked below and you can stay tuned for her podcast. Um, as always, Erin, thank you for hosting this show with me. I love you so much. Of course. I love you too. And Madison, I'm so excited that like now we're friends. So definitely no, now we're friends. stay in touch, please. You're amazing. Thank you for sure. Thank you for having me. And listeners, tune in next time to another episode of Everything You Know About Disability is Wrong. See you then. If you liked what you heard, go ahead and subscribe and leave us a review wherever you get your podcasts. Thank you to our listeners. And as always, thank you to Easter Seals for giving us the space and resources to share such authentic conversations from within the disability community to our listeners. And I'll see you next time for another episode of Everything You Know About Disability is Wrong. Everything you know about disability is wrong! This is a podcast brought to you by Easter Seals. You know, we actually work for Easter Seals, but maybe our listeners don't know what we do. That's true. Easter Seals is leading the way to full access, equity, and inclusion for disabled people and their families. And did you know we've been doing this for more than a century? This includes helping disabled people find meaningful employment and addressing health care needs for all ages. We're proud to serve communities across the country and ready for the next 100 years. For more, check out EasterSeals.com.